Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric and today I wanted to talk to you about a jogging control circuit. How do you wire that up? How do you set that up? There are multiple ways and I'm going to go over a couple of different ways that you can wire up a jogging circuit. So let's get right into that video. Okay, well here on my screen, I have uh, quite a large circuit. I've got three motors represented here. I've got uh, motor number one, motor number two, and motor number three. And then I have a control. I have 40 volt coming down to feed a control transformer. And that transformer is feeding 110 volts to a, it looks just like a three wire start stop circuit with the addition of a selector switch. It's a two position, two position selector switch. Um, I'm gonna open my screen here so we can see more of it. And I just wanted you to be able to see the motors that were up top. So if I scroll up to the top, this is what you're looking at in this split screen. You're looking at these three motors. And on this side of the screen, we can look at the control circuit itself. And the first, the first control circuit that I have here only has a, it's a three wire start stop, with the addition of this two wires, two position selector switch. Um, so if I click start, motor number one will come on. You can see no, motor number one came on. My M1 contactor came on, starting motor number one. If I hit stop, my M1 contactor disengages. This M1 coil is the coil for this contactor. So if I, if I power that coil up, that contactor closes, that motor starts. Same as in our three wire start stop circuit. If we lose our overload, our overload opened over here and the heaters opened and turned the motor off. We lost our neutral to this control circuit, which de-energized the coil, de-energized de the contactor, which de-energized the motor. So let me reset my overload. My overloads are reset. So now what is this switch here? Let me show you. So if I turn the motor on and I flip that switch off, the motor won't run. But now I can use the start button as a jog button. By putting the switch here, I've eliminated the holding circuit in the coil and I can use my start button to jog the motor. Now, sometimes this is used for, uh, like on a conveyor system, if you want to line something up to another piece of equipment or to a photo eye or uh, anything like that. If you want to line something up in order to get for the system to start in a certain position, a lot of times you'll need to jog that conveyor into place. And this is one of the ways that you can do it. So you're using the start button both as a start button and as a jog button. If you close that back up, the start button will act like a normal start stop. All right, another way to do this circuit, let me just move on down. And now this circuit is going to control motor number two on this side of my screen. So it's gonna control this motor. This circuit I am using my start button as a start button only. My stop button also stops the circuit as well, but I have a separate push button that controls two sets of contacts. When you push the button, it's only a jog. It disengages power on it. <laughs> it disengages power to my holding contact and acts as a jog. So I can jog the motor with this button and line that conveyor up or whatever using the jog switch. But when I take my finger off the jog switch, the circuit acts as a normal start stop. All right, sometimes people don't like this kind of a circuit only because if your finger slips off this button relatively quickly, once in a while, the motor can stay running. And that would be a problem. If the spacing between these contacts isn't, isn't large enough, it might bridge that circuit. Um, I've never really had have it I've never really had it happen to me, but I know that it can happen. And then finally, a third form of this circuit 
we're using an ice cube relay. Now, let me show you what that is if you don't know. This is an eight pin ice cube relay. You can see the eight pins on the bottom of the relay. This is an Allen Bradley eight pin ice cube. And um, it looks, let's see if I can bring this over. This is how the wiring is on an eight pin ice cube relay. Uh, on this particular one anyway, you have a coil. This is a 110 volt coil on my, re well, actually this relay here that I was showed you is a 240 volt coil. But in our circuit, we're using a 110 volt relay. And if you apply 110 volt between two and seven, a magnetic field will be induced. And right now circuit or whatever's on number one is connected to four. And once you apply voltage, this arm will move from four to three. And so one will be closed with three. So this circuit is normally, is normally open. One and three are normally open. One and four are normally closed. Same thing on this side. Eight and five are normally closed. Eight and six are normally open. So what we're doing is we're energizing our ice cube relay. Our ice cube relay, we're using one and three, which was normally open and eight and six, which was normally open to one of those co contacts is keeping itself on. So that becomes our holding contact. The other contact actually will start our motor. And so hit start. The, the, coil, the ice cube relay energizes, closing the holding contact, keeping itself on and also closing the other set of contacts turning on the motor. Now, if you'll notice, I have the neutral to my motor coil on this side of the overload, and the overload is controlling both my motor and my ice cube. That's, that's really important because if I lose my overload, my overload tripped, uh, if I come over here and try to start, it won't start. But if I come down here and try to jog, it won't jog. But if I, had, if I had wired this the other way, and let me just show you, let me eliminate that wire, eliminate that wire, and turn this circuit back on. So if I had wired it like this, and I lost my overload, my, my uh, ice cube relay won't start, but I'm able to jog my motor. I'm able to jog my motor even though the overloads are open. Not a good thing. Not good at all. So let me turn that. Let me uh, put it back the way it was. Eliminate these wires. And put it back the way it was. Turn the circuit back on. And now the motor will operate correctly. Jog won't do anything because the motor is on. If I turn it off, I can come in here and jog the motor. So that's three different jogging circuits. And there are more, there are, there are a few more. So uh, ways that you can do this. So that's three different kinds that we've showed you today. Hope you learned something new today. If you like these videos, remember to click the subscribe button or the like button and click the bell notification if you wanna be notified of more videos like this. And until our next video, have a great day.